Savior, our keeper, our strength, our redeemer, and in that we thank him, and we give him glory, we give him praise. My mom them used to sing a song that said, thank you, Lord. Take a moment to say thank you. If you're not, if you're not told God thank you all day, I just want you to take this opportunity just to say thank you. But what are we thanking God for? We're thanking Him. We're thanking Him because He is God. That, that's the first thing. Just because you're God and you're worthy to be glorified and lifted up, we say thank you. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength, breath, and our body. We thank you for another day you've given us, stores that is opening. You've been that provider, food on the table, gas in the car. Come on, roof over the head. Come on. We say thank you. We don't take these things for granted. But every opportunity that God has given us here in the earth, we want to acknowledge him. The Bible said acknowledge him in all our ways, and he will direct our path. And that we are so grateful. Now listen, if you've done anything outside, uh, outside the will of God, whether you whether you sin and you've known of it, known of known sin or unknown sin, I want you right now just to take a moment to just repent. Lord, forgive me. Come on, say it with me. Say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with your blood as white as snow. Father, if there's anything in my heart, as, as you forgive me, as I forgive my debtors, created me a clean heart, as David said, and renew the right spirit within me. As we go into this Bible study, Father, we're praying that you begin to speak to us, give us information and revelation. We know that your word is inerrant. It is a light upon our feet and a lamp upon our pathway or a lamp upon our feet and a light upon our path. But it is there to guide us, give us compass, com compass as you direct us from day to day. Enlighten our understanding, Father. Let the word be sown into good grounds that it may bring forth fruit, that at the end may, we may be established. You said that we believe um, in you as the scripture saith. Out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. All right, kingdom, it's time for Bible study. Your pastor showed up for Bible study. I wanted to do a recap. <clears throat> so many things has uh, occurred, so many events have, has occurred since we've been in our Nehemiah teaching. I want to say thank you to Dr. Val, who was a prophetic instrument and in strength to our congregation. If you enjoyed the word, from Dr. Val, I want you guys to give Dr. Valerie Moore <clears throat> some accolades. Thank you, Dr. Val, for coming in our both locations, pouring into our vision, our staff at the time of our vulnerabilities as we are laying, laying to rest. Um, some of our loved ones, um, we've, we've, we've got word that some of the congregations lost loved ones too, and my brother as well. <clears throat> so we are laying to rest. Uh, my, my big brother this weekend and so we're in a we're in a very vulnerable moment vulnerable state so we thank you south florida even south florida for praying for us those that are praying for us around the world around the globe we appreciate all the prayers all the calls all the support um i i, I walked in church and one of the members was ministering to me and they said you look good and um i said it is the power of god and they finished the sentence that keeps holding me up. And I believe that. I believe in my weaknesses, God is made strong. And um, and, and, and and I heard this. Now, this is not what I want to sing 
but I heard, who can I run to? I need y'all to run to Jesus. Come on, saints, clap your hands and give them glory. <laughs> it, when you're in distress, when you're going through hard times, and you can run, run to alcohol or you can run to the things of this world, but I choose to follow Jesus. I choose to run to him. He said, um, the righteous run in, and they are what? The Lord is a strong tower. Come on, saints. I need y'all to run to the strong tower. The Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. So that is our posture to stay in God, with God, as God continues to give us the strength from day to day. Okay? So we're in the book of Nehemiah. <clears throat> this voice of mine, pray for it. <clears throat> we're in the book of Excuse me, Nehemiah chapter num number six. Now, Dr. Valerie Moore, she articulated Genesis chapter 26. Uh, we would never look at Isaac, that chapter again, as Isaac went to go di dig the wells. She brought <clears throat> out so many impeccable revelations and nuggets that we can live by from day to day. If you miss Sunday, you have to go to the YouTube channel. You have to go to our Facebook page. I'm not just promoting Dr. Val, but I am definitely pushing that word of revelation and an impeccable wisdom that she taught, you know, to give us instructions on how to remain. <clears throat> Take a breather. Come on, breathe and remain. And as God used her to articulate so profoundly um, about Isaac, I would never see, I don't, know about, I don't know about you guys, but I would never see that text the same again. I, um, Genesis 26, dealing with Isaiah that dug the well. And so here in the strength of God, we meet tonight and we're going to recap a little bit. Um, about Nehemiah chapter 6. And we're, we're in the book of Nehemiah, have not left the book of Nehemiah. The Lord instructed us as we crossed over from 23 into 24 to articulate, hallelujah, to articulate um, the Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah. And we've been on this leap and finish, all right? This leap and finish, y'all. 52 weeks, we were going to act scrap principles from the book of Nehemiah that we could live by from day to day to give us principles and strategies on how to build in this season. The Lord spoke to us with a prophetic word that we would leap and that leaping is everything to do with the supernatural. And so when, G when God declared that in uh, our Old Testament scripture that I'm going to give you the power to run through troops and leap over walls. It was a supernatural declaration over the people as they begin to soar and win. So I believe that we are winning by the supernatural strength of God. And that's why we're telling you to take a leap. Everything about this year requires a leap of faith. Taking a leap into your future, your finances, your family, um, your children. Uh, God, God just putting things back together where he is of divinely orchestrating your footsteps to accomplish what he has designed you to accomplish in the earth. I want you guys to put on the screen, I'm taking a leap. Comment, comment in the comment, I am taking a leap. And that's why I believe the Lord has us. While taking a leap, we made a declaration that we're going to finish it. And this is where we are, you guys, in uh, the in the, in in the the process of finishing what God has instructed our hands to do. And so I want everybody that can and will go with me to Nehemiah chapter 6, verse number uh, 15 and 16, right? As we declare the word of the Lord, for the word of the Lord is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay, so we're going to Nehemiah chapter 6, verse number 15. And um, <clears throat> yeah, Nehemiah 6 chapter number, uh, verse number uh, yeah, Nehemiah 6, chapter number, uh, is that 50, yeah, 15 and 16. I'm going to deal with how God is going to use them to be uh, wall workers, wall completers, the assignment that God gives them. We're going to see how they're going to accomplish and finish or complete this assignment. And so Nehemiah, <clears throat> Nehemiah says in verse number 15, so on 
October the 2nd, the wall was finished. I want you all to see this. October the 2nd, the wall was finished. Just 52 days after we had began. Right? And let's read verse number 16. And when the enemy and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and they were humiliated. They, they realized this work had been done. I want y'all to see that. See, it's the latter part of this verse that, that gives me confidence that we are not alone as we are completing the finished work that God has called our hands to do. He said, and they realized this work had been done with, I want y'all to finish that, the help of our God. Y'all hear that? And so Nehemiah already made that declaration. <clears throat> what we just did in 52 days, it was because of the help of God. And that is a declaration that we're making that anything that we're accomplishing in the earth, <clears throat> God is helping us to accomplish this assignment. You got to excuse me. God is helping us to finish this assignment with God's help. I want y'all to hear this. Say that with me. With God's help. I want y'all to declare that. Whatever, hallelujah. What I, whatever I'm going to finish, I'm going to finish with God's help. The church choir today. Yeah, ain't nobody in here with me. That's why. I, okay, I get it. That's why. I was, okay, Sammy, I see a little clap. Three claps, okay, so that means y'all got to make some stadium, stadium noise in the comments because the church is a little quiet. I'm, I'm used to, come on, Tremika Clock, that's it. I'm used to Kingdom. Come on, Shadra. I'm used to, come on, Jasmine. I'm Thurston. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Cha cha Charity, that, okay, they helped they help me out now, Lonnie and Jenny. With God's help, whatever you're going to accomplish in this earth, and this time, you're going to do it with God's help. And so let's go back. The Lord spoke to us, um, and he said, while being in prayer, he encouraged me to encourage each individual uh, that you're getting ready to finish what you started. This season, God is anointing you, and I want you all to hear me with, in, in the Holy Ghost. God is anointing you uh, with the power to finish it. I don't care what it looks like. You are anointed with the power to finish it, okay? I challenge each individual um, to consider 2023, and I want you to think about how many tasks or goals. Would you do me a favor under that chair as a basket is my cell phone holder. You got to work for me today. Thank you. It's my little cell phone holder. It should be under that chair. <clears throat> he said, I'm going to anoint you with the power to finish it. And I really believe that's what the Lord is doing. He's anointing us with the power to finish it. And so let's go, 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 go a little deeper and do an observation. I want you guys to think about, <clears throat> think about um, how many things, let me put it this way, thank you, so I can see them. How many things have you completed in life? I want you guys to think about that. How many things have you completed in life what have you accomplished uh during the time that god has allowed it you allotted you to be in the earth i want you to think about it for a moment what all has your hand been put put to the plow to to finish because there's instructions that i need you guys to see the bible said work while it is day for when night cometh no man can work so our job is to ensure that we are maximizing on opportunities to um, exhaust our ability to accomplish what he sent us to do in the earth. Okay, so your job is to work while it is day. Jesus had such an appetite for the mandate on his life that when his disciples even asked him to eat, he said, I'm not hungry. They said that Jesus already eat. Jesus said, wait, I have meat that you know not of. You know how you're working on a project or you're working on a goal and it seems like I, I, I forgot to eat? Or that's when you were really zealed about what, what, what you wanted to accomplish. So you, it was hard to go to sleep. It, or, or when you went to sleep, you jumped right up because you had such great expectations with what you were assigned to do in the earth. Holy Spirit said, I'm, I'm reviving the expectation of 
the saints in the earth. Some of you guys have lost your zeal and your expectation. That's why you don't have the drive and the momentum like you used to to really go after what God has called you to do. I want to say this too, that time is priceless, and I'm learning this each and every day. And you guys know my family story, and I'm not here to sell you a story of my loss, but I gain understanding with my loss that time is priceless. And so for many of you, I need you to stop wasting time, wasting time, okay? I need you guys to stop wasting time, wasting time. I need you to get in a hurry, in a hurry. This is my, this is, this is the gospel message. You hear me? My job is to ensure that you are in a hurry about the thing that God has called you to do. So many of us verbalize and have and, and have started several life projects. You said to yourself, I'm going to save this amount of money this year. I'm going to lose weight this year. I'm going back to college this year. I'm going to write the book. I'm going to read through the Bible. Some of you you told God you was going to read through the Bible, and you ain't even got through one book yet. You can't even get through Philemon. You can't get through Philemon. It, it's a problem when you can't get through Philemon. All right? So he's saying, okay, I, 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 I don't just want you to just have a desire, but I want you to fulfill destiny. Desires is the prerequisite of you fulfilling destiny. Many of us have desires, but we can't fulfill no, 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 no. What, 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 what is causing you uh, uh, um, to, to, to keep that drive to ensure you are, thank you, fulfilling destiny? It's very important. So you said, I'm going to read through the Bible this year. I'm going to clean and organize my life. Come on. Y'all know how many times I told, told myself you got to clean out your closet. I, 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 yeah, I know I need to clean the closet. I, it, it, it's, it, it's a little goal. It's a short-term goal, but, but it's my goal. It's my goal, okay? I don't need to buy nothing else until I clean out my closet. Y'all hear me? Okay, some of us said we need to be more active in the local church. Some of you guys said I need to be more productive on my job. I need to be more productive with my goals and on, on the workplace. I need to be a, a, a more a, a effective mother. You, you know you didn't spend enough time with your children. You know you didn't spend enough time with your spouse. You, you know you didn't spend enough time with your wife. You, you don't spend enough time with your parents. You, 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 you don't spend, spend enough time with your family. How many times you say, you know, I got to do better. I got to cook this week for my family and, and I said to myself we have great expectations but we have poor executions oh the saints y'all gotta hear me we have great expectations but we have poor executions Galatians says this praise the Lord all I needed was water Oh, praise the Lord. Let, let the water come. Praise God. I feel better. So Galatians 5 and 7 says this in the NLT. You were running the, the, waste, the race well. I'm in bed. Listen to the Bible study. Y'all, co-pastor didn't make it to the building. She made it to the bed. Co-pastor, you were here last week, though. Okay, Carol, Galatians 5 and 7. You And I can hear Carol say this. You were running this race well. Who has held you back? And I want to put a, a pin right there. Who and what has held you back? One thing about one thing about us, I need you guys to do this because when we're finishing this, you can understand this. You have to know how, because many of us cannot delete distractions because we cannot recognize the distraction. You cannot delete what you've not discovered. And so some of us need to discover what is, you got to say to yourself, what is your distraction or who is, okay, thanks. Y'all get this, who or what has held you back? You got to think about this, deleting distraction. You have very high expectations, poor, poor executions. You're pitching vision, but you can't execute vision. Many people can pitch it, but cannot executed. You are energetic. You are motivated. But somehow between the starting line and the finishing line, something or someone has hindered you. You lose motivation. You drown in failure, inferiority, uh, fatigueness, fear, and we faint. But you got to ask yourself, why? why? Why am I so excited about the idea 
but I cannot put the idea in practicality. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot birth this thing through. But God said, no, 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 I need you guys to focus because you have to learn how to execute what God has called you to do. So in my research, I discovered reasons why people leave things unfinished. And I need you to ask yourself, do, do you fall in either of the seven? Because again, you cannot go to your destination until you first identified your present state. If we were doing Uber, if we were doing uh, Google Maps, you say, listen, I want to go to the Book of Mall. They're going to ask you, where are you and where are you headed? A lot of people can identify where they're headed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But they cannot identify where they are. Where are you? I want you to ask yourself that question, where am I and who has held me back? Seven reasons, seven reasons, you guys. A lack of self-motivation. All right, David, hallelujah. Some of you guys quit because you have no one else pushing you. So your drive is based on your crowd and not your cloud. You, you, you need a crowd to push you. You need somebody to push. There are seasons where you have to be self-motivated. David said he had to encourage himself in the Lord. Have you not succeeded because you failed to be your first encourager? You lack self-motivation. All right. Now, some others, some others, and I want you to think about where you are. Some of us, we don't set realistic goals. Right, realistic, I'm talking about realistic goals. Some of us say, okay, we're gonna, I'm going to save $10,000 when you've not even saved 500 and you cannot make it to the 1,000. So you set goals that are beyond your reach. You have to set realistic goals, not unrealistic goals, okay? Right? Number three, distractions. What is your distraction or who is your distraction? Number four, a lack of commitment. Some of us are not committed, right? Number five, procrastination. You put it back, 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 and you can't fulfill it because you really wrestle with procrastination. Number six, we overload ourselves with responsibilities, but we have to evaluate what's important. You're doing too much at once. Learning to set and prioritize what is necessary first. Prioritizing goals and accomplishments. That's important. All right. Another thing, number seven, commitment versus capacity. You are committed to something you have no capacity for. Some of you guys have to build your capacity before you make your commitment. You got to know. You got to know. Yes, Tariqa, sometimes we're doing too much and we're not mastering anything. So there's a difference between long term long term goals because we're finishing this year i want you guys to set some things i want you to set i want you guys to get a little book and i want you to set some little goals even if it's three what are three things you can finish by the summer and what are three things you can finish by december write that down three and three that's six six things you can finish this year what are three things you can accomplish or finish by the summer and what are things you're going to finish by December? There's some things. And then I have my other short-term goals. Where, what are some things I can finish, finish by Friday? Well, I, I have those weekly um, short-term goals, monthly short-term goals, daily short-term goals. One of my goals was, and this may you know, blow, some of, blow, blow some of your socks out because sometimes I'm so busy. I said, I'm going to start making up my bed every day. <laughs> That's why I just jump out. Let, I've got, got to get out of here. I'm lady already. I got to prioritize myself. Settle down. Make up your bed. Put your stuff away. Put your shoes away. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a goal for me. I got to put some stuff away because I'm just in and out. So I got to set, prioritize what's important for me so I won't lose control. Sometimes I lose control because I don't manage the small things because I'm so busy chasing the big things. 
Setting daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, yearly goals. So we, we, and, and we, we taught this, that Jesus instructs Peter as he began to launch. He said, launch a little from land. No, don't go too far because this catch, this next catch, and which was big, don't take all of that. Sometimes your success is in the small lunges. So Carol said small steps is getting ready to birth big moves. Yes, yeah, small steps, big moves. Small steps, big moves, okay? So keep in mind, individuals, we are committed to, you can, I'm sorry, you cannot be committed to your excuses more than your executions. You cannot be committed to your excuses more than your ex. Yeah, which one I said? What, the, what I said, Tanya? Excuses more than your executions. That's it. Yeah, can't. All right, so watch this, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 7 and 8. I need everybody to do me a favor. I need all y'all, if you can't spell it, just, just uh, 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 what, what, what's it called? Do the abbreviation of it. Put E-C-C, E-C-C, Ecclesiastes, okay. <laughs> okay, cool, e Ecclesiastes 7 and 8. Ecclesiastes 7 and 8. I want y'all to see that. I need y'all to, I need y'all to write that on the screen. It says, I want y'all to see this. 7 and 8. From the NLT. From the NLT, it says this. Finishing is better than starting. Come on, we're in the book of wisdom. What is that book of wisdom? That is, that is Proverbs and wisdom. Proverbs, uh, Proverbs, Psalms, Ecclesiastes, Psalms of Solomon. All of that is the book of wisdom. That would give you, it's give you wisdom. That text said, finishing is better than starting. I don't want you to stop anything until you finish. And patience is better than pride. Yeah, we, come on, those are, those are two principles that God just gave us. Finishing is better than starting. God put an Ecclesiastes 7 and 8 down in my spirit. Okay, for some of y'all deep folk, God put Ecclesiastes 7 and 8 down in my shando. Shando, shando, okay? Put it right there in that shando. Finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. I speak, I want to speak over your life. This is the year you're going to make it to the finishing line. Only, hallelujah, I only see finishing line in view. I need y'all to hear me in the Holy Ghost. I am prophesying right here. This year, you shall make it to the finishing line. Yes, this year you shall make it to the finishing line. I feel it in my Holy Ghost. This is the year you're going to make it. Yes, right? And so, again, Nehemiah said October the 2nd. They, they started this work, you guys. And you guys, we've read this. And they started this wall of rebuilding. And some of you guys, hallelujah, some of you guys are frustrated because you're in rebuilding mode. Stop being frustrated. Stop being frustrated and wrestling with doing it again because you can't move forward because you're still stuck on I'm here again. Okay, it's okay. Some people have to do it again. So Nehemiah is in rebuild mode. He's not, he's not stuck and frustrated because he has to do it all over. Some of you guys are procrastinating because you can't get over the fact that you're starting over. Stop wasting time pondering the start over and focus on the finishing line. Okay, so I'm starting over. I'm embracing that. And he said, okay. And then he said this, with the help of God, they realized, verse number 16 said, they realized this work had been done with the help of God. Remember kingdom, Jesus is my help. Jesus is our help. What is going to help you accomplish what you need to do in the earth is because Jesus is your help. So you have to give yourself some declarations. One, I look to the hills. From with cometh all my help. Okay. All my help. Come from the Lord. The next time you go through. Say I look to the where? Hills. What are you looking to? Who are you looking to? Look to the hills. 
Make that declaration. The word that I speak, there are life and there are spirit. There's some stuff you're trying to birth out and you're trying to find research. You're trying to find, you know, where to look and answers. God said, look to the hills. I kid you guys not all week last week. You guys know we had just got the news of the passing of my brother and I was completely devastated. Emotionally, I was completely devastated. I, found, I, I literally felt myself going down a slow slope. I had to pull myself up. And I was asking God some questions. And I said, God, could you please just answer this one question? I, told, I didn't tell anybody about this question. I said, God, could you please just answer this one question? I didn't tell anybody about this question. I said, God, I need, I need clarity. I said, I, I don't want to argue with you because I'm open to accept your will. But I need clarity. I start looking to the hill. Come on. All last week, I was, I'm a hill looker. Y'all hear me? I look to the, look up. Hallelujah. Where my help comes from. I said, I looked at this. I said, God, I just need an answer. I just need, I just need, I just need encouragement. I just need some clarity. I just need to hear from you. That's why I kept saying, I need a word from the Lord. One word from the Lord. You know, they used to sing that song. I need a word. We need a word from the Lord. You know, back in the day, we killed that song because we really wanted a word. When you, when you need answers, you look to the hills. When you need strength, you look to the hills. Come on, when you need God to open up doors and give you resources, you look to the hills from with cometh your help. I'm a hill looker. And so I began to look up to the heavens. Every day, every night, I, felt, I, 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 I went to sleep on my pillow. I said, God, I need you. Every moment I could, could embrace God, even in my shower, I said, God, Lady Joy, I love you. I said, God, I need you. Y'all hear me in the Holy Ghost? I said, God, I need you. I need a touch. I need your strength. And I need direction. I need compass. I need understanding. I'm riding back from Lake Worth to uh, Pompano on Sunday. We got a call. Dr. Bynum needs to speak to you. Dr. Bynum gets us on the phone, Carol and I. She said, I was in my prayer closet, and the Holy Ghost dropped this word for you. The very thing I was praying for all week. And I, one thing about a word, I want you all to know, you got to go, when you go into prayer, you put something in prayer, and you let it wait until God released the answer. You know, we came to church, we came to church expecting an answer to come from the pulpit. We came to church expecting an answer. I didn't care if an answer came through a song, through a dance. The answer, the answer can come through the offering. It can come through the preacher. It, it can come through the moderator. It, it, it can come through us walking up these stairs and somebody stopping you from the side and said, I don't know, hallelujah, I don't know why I'm saying this to you but the Holy Ghost told me to say when, when was the last time you pulled on God for a word that's what I'm talking about I start looking to the hills Watch this. for the Lord y'all know Carol for the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run and be saved come on Carol for the Lord is a strong tower come on he is I, I need y'all to you got to know the character of God to embrace his sovereign sovereignty and and to embrace his power and his uh, omniscience to say god you only you the lord is a strong tower the righteous does what we run in and we are saved god you fight my battle hallelujah and i know and i know some of y'all like well god ain't moving fast enough but he said vengeance is mine saith the I need somebody to learn to wait on the Lord and be a good cheer. And again, I say, wait on God. For the Lord is a strong tower. Only, yeah, y'all know only kingdom can appreciate when I say that. You know, some of you guys may. The Lord is a what? Strong tower. He's our strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. All right? Watch this. This is one of my favorite. The Lord is the light of uh, the Lord is my light of my salvation. Woo. Some of y'all got to pull it out. What is, who is the Lord? The Lord is my light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I need y'all to hear this last part. Not only because he is my light, I shall not fear, but the Lord is the strength. Come on, in my weaknesses, he's made strong. He is the strength of my life. 
And whom shall I be afraid? I need you to, you got to know. You got to know that God is your strength. Never put your trust in man. Never lean on man. We lean and depend upon the Lord. Acknowledge the Lord in all his ways and lean not. I need to set it again to get into your spirit. Every time you lean on your knowledge, your wisdom, your intellect, you, you will fail yourself every time trying to figure this thing out because faith is not net math. It is the supernatural. He said, he said, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he shall direct your Lean not. Lean not. I said, Cheryl, don't trust your own understanding because my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Come on here. He said, you got to trust me. And I learned trusting him is not always understanding. You don't always get answers. That's why Paul said, it's not that I have apprehended. I don't know what God's getting ready to do. But this one thing I do know, he that be, y'all going to make me run in this chair and I don't have no organ. Get on that keyboard. I'm going to say it one more time. Get on that keyboard. I feel like screaming, but I ain't going to run, y'all. I said, it's not that I've apprehended. I'm on the, you can do the keyboard. You can do the keyboard. I'm, I put it on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do it, kingdom. It's not that I've apprehended, but this one thing I do know. He that begun a good work. I'm going to say it one more time, kingdom. Hallelujah. It is not that I have apprehended. But it's one thing I do know. He that begun a good work, he shall finish it. And I need you to make that declaration that he is the author and the finisher of my... That was for all my daughters. God's getting ready to finish this thing. That which he started... All right. I just want to get that out a little bit. Okay. All right. I ain't going to have church. I just, every now and again, y'all know I haven't preached in a while, so I need a little push here. All right. Let, let's get out of here. All right. So, Romans said, what shall we say then if God be for us? We got to know who's for us. We got to know who's fighting for us. We got to know who's, who's for us. All of these things. Okay. Okay. We're going there. Okay. 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 The Nehemiah Project, they built the wall. And they're reconstructing. We know this. And uh, God used him as a wall builder. And so you got to build this. You, 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 you have been contracted by God to build this thing. All right. And, and, and they went through the warfare and we got to see Nehemiah 4 and 11 got, gets my attention. And this is where, this is where, this is where, this is where kingdom that the, the enemy and you guys see, and God puts me right in the middle of the word that we're preaching. We got to see this y'all watch this. So we're here rebuilding the church. Did not know we was going to be doing all of this. Came into this year, he said, leap and finish. We're, we're, we're in rebuilding mode. And Nehemiah 4 and 11 said, And our adversaries did not know, neither see, until come into the midst of them, and I shall slay them, and will cause the work to cease. The warfare that Nehemiah was under, the objective of the enemy, was to cause the work to cease. You are contracted by God. Yes, I said it. And so the enemy wants you to cease the work. He wants to stop. He wants, and that word cease means to discontinue. He wants to stop and hinder you. So he's going to ensure that warfare arises. And verse number 12 says in the NLT, from all directions. Warfare is coming from all directions. Now watch this. I am your open model, you guys. As we are building warfare, is coming to all directions. Carol pointed out all the loss that we experienced. We lost something major in January. We lost something, no, major in January, February. And then, what month are we in? My brother, we've already had three major lost and I'm trying, I don't know about you guys, but I'm trying to mentally balance the loss and the lunch. God is telling you to finish something when you are losing everything. 
How do I finish something when I'm losing? I feel like I'm losing everything. And he's saying to you, you're going to finish, but I feel like a loser. How do you give us a word that contradicts our reality? Come on, God said, no, Bill. Bill, what? The builders have lost the bill. The builders have cased the bill. <laughs> but God is saying, no, keep building. You're going to finish. But everything I finish, I keep, everything I start, I keep losing. But you've given me the word to finish. Because it is the enemy's job to attack from all directions. You guys already know. The word attack. The worry attack. The weary attack. Come on. The word attack was there to insult the self-esteem of the builder. The, worry at the word attack was, um, yeah, was designed to uh, uh, insult the self-esteem of the builder. The worry attack was to cause the builder to focus on the opposition that was bigger against them versus what was in them. The weary, the weary, the weary attack was there because they had been working so long without seeing the results they wanted to see because they could not see. And through all of this, you're telling us we're going to finish Look to the hills. Come on in. Come on in. Do it. Oh, oh, come on. Preach to me. Pre I say, I say, preach to me, Pastor Linda. Look to the hills during the loss. And you and, and you have to still dust yourself out and says, watch this. And this is where this scripture makes sense. And I'm getting ready to close. Watch this. Don't you slay me. <laughs> Yet will you do what? Trust him. I don't understand you, but I, I am obligated to trust you. But, it, but, but you're, you're not going to understand everything that God allows, but we are obligated to trust him even we, when we don't understand him because we walk by faith and not by sight. So what he did, it was to cease to work. That word cease, that word cease, y'all see it. It is in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 11. You can read it on your own time. Let's cease the work, chapter 12. Let's attack them in all directions, right? As it was designed to cease the work, this is, this is to bring the work to an end. After all the hits you had all year long, you should not have the tenacity to want to finish anything. Come on, it should have knocked the wind out of you, the life out of you, the tenacity out of you, the strength out of you. But I hear the Lord said, you will not end the work. Every attack from all directions, come on here, Karen, is designed to end the work, to cease the work. But I need you all to know this. The Holy Spirit said to me, he said, he said, Cheryl, the, 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 the work will not end be ended. The work will not end. I need y'all to hear me in the Holy Ghost. I need y'all to hear me in the Holy Ghost that the work will not end. That devil is a liar. He will not end what God has designed your hands to do. And that's why I declared that. And I need to make that declaration over the congregation. When I was on here, he said, Cheryl, tell the people that this is not a discontinued this is a to be continued. And you, hallelujah. And you may have to go in time out. And, and hallelujah. You, you, you may have to do what Dr. Val told us to do. Hallelujah. That, that you have to just breathe. Because it was famine after famine. You've been there too long. And God is telling you to remain right there in Egypt. And don't go nowhere. Don't go. He said don't. No, no remain where you are and don't go to Egypt. When she said that, you guys, I almost tore the whole side of this church up. Because it's not just saying you can't go anywhere, but it specifically said you can't go back to Egypt. Egypt represents bondage. The enemy is taking some of you guys through so much until it wants to go. It, the enemy wants you to return from, from where God delivered you from. Egypt represents bondage. Egypt represents my past. 
Egypt Hadabaso. Egypt represents that place of bondage. And so because you've been going through famine after famine and, and because you've been there too long, the enemy's trying to instruct you to go back to Egypt. But God told tells Isaac, don't go nowhere. Stay right here. And I came to encourage you, don't go back to Egypt. Some of y'all can't afford to go back to unprofitable relationships that God brought you out of. Unprofitable situations that God brought you out of. Unprofitable atmospheres that God brought you out of. Unproductive conversations that God brought you out of. Around unproductive people. You are too free to go back. You may be hurt, but you're free. You may be broken, but you're free. I need y'all to hear me, but you are still, you may be going through in your emotions, but you are free. I may be going through some trials right now. I may be going through some mishaps right now. I may be going through some storms right now, but I'm free at last, free at last. Thank God almighty. You are, you can't return back to what God brought you out of because you are going through what you are going through right now. Don't go back to Egypt. That's what the enemy, that, 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 that's what the enemy wants. Y'all got to hear me. That's, that's what the enemy wants. He would love for some of you to go back. Hallelujah. He would love for some of you to, to, to watch this, pick up the phone and call some people that that's just sitting at the edge of their seat waiting on you. Come on, some of your some of your, your past is just waiting on you to make that phone call. They're waiting on you to make that phone call, to make that move because the enemy, watch this, wants to sift this wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith don't fail you not. I'm closing kingdom. Watch this to be continued. God is our help. He said, they will know, they, they, there's no way they could have done all of this except they have the help of God. God is saying, God is saying this, hear me, hear me in the Holy Ghost, free. I got one word for y'all, free. I'm telling you, I got one word for you, I, free. Oh, come on, you tell somebody, I may be hurt, but I'm free. I may lose some stuff, but I feel like I'm about to run. Come on, kingdom. I probably lost some stuff, but I'm free. Come on. I may be down, but I'm free. I may not have all the money in my pocket, but tell, tell somebody I'm free. I may lose some people, but I'm free. I may be going through, but I'm free. And because I'm free, I press toward the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Tell them I won't look back because God brought me out of that. I won't return back to bondage. I won't return back to bondage. I won't return back to what God brought me out of. Because who the sun set free. I need some shadows in this room. I feel like preaching on a Tuesday. Tell them he brought you out of what you were in. He brought you over. He broke every addiction. He broke every soul tie. He broke every mental battle that was in your life. I may be contemplating, trying to figure out where I'm going. But the Bible said, forget those things which are behind me. But I, kingdom say, put a press down. Hobasando, say, put a press down in your spirit. He brought you too far. He scraped you from the hand of the enemy. Tell him, I won't go back, but I'm only moving forward. Tell him, forward march. God's been too good to me. And don't you slay me. Yet will, I'm going to trust you. I may be hurt right now, but I choose to trust you. I 
probably lost some things but I choose to trust you I may be broken in my emotions but I choose tell somebody trust in the Lord with all of your heart tell them what you're going through right now how about my soul it's a trust test are you gonna lean on them now are you gonna stand in this word are you gonna trust God he said put on the whole armor of the Lord tell that devil I ain't going nowhere I won't go back I'm not throwing in the towel but I'm gonna stand right here put on the whole armor of God that you're able to withstand the wounds of that devil tell him where's your helmet helmet of salvation sword of the spirit tell that devil don't make me cut you because no weapon formed against me shall prosper you won't have my destiny you won't have my future you won't have my breakthrough tell them this means war because the weapon of my warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty tell them pull down every stronghold every evil imagination I like that Jamaica I want you to tell your neighbor say neighbor tell somebody in your house say house neighbor get dressed put on the whole armor tell them put on your armor breastplate of righteousness helmet of salvation shield of faith sword of the sword of the spirit I'm going to let y'all go my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ his righteousness I dare not trust in the sweetest frame but only 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 lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock tell them why why pastor Cheryl you should be having a nervous breakdown but on Christ the solid the solid rock that I stand you should be losing your mind but on Christ the solid rock I stand you should be going to the club getting you a lemon shot but tell them on Christ I should be smoking weed shooting up something in my vein but on Christ I should be sleeping around hoeing around but on Christ the solid rock I stand get dressed kingdom get your mind together get dressed kingdom put on your war clothes get dressed kingdom Tell that devil the weapon of my warfare. All right, kingdom, I'm getting out of here. Hold on, Sunday. Hallelujah. Some of y'all, while you're home, you need to shout, Hallelujah. You thought you was going to steal my joy. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all, y'all know. Y'all should be getting y'all a, a leechy martini. But tell them on Christ, the solid rock I stand. You need to shout hallelujah. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast. God, you're still good. God, you're still faithful. God, you still is a healer. You are still a mind regulator. You are still a keeper. You are still a way maker. You're still my provider. You're still the I am, I am, that I am. You're still Lord and Savior. You're still in control. You're still Jehovah Jireh. You're still Jehovah Nisi. You're still Jehovah Rapha. You are my banner. 
says canoe you are our God on Christ that's all I'm gonna say kingdom on Christ on Christ Hallelujah, give us strength. Hallelujah, give us strength. Father, give us strength, oh God. I hope it's built on nothing less. My banner, my battle line. When I don't know who else to turn to, come on, we turn to him. I taught, a, I taught a message, I'm a steel man. That's, that's steel. You know, you, you got the steel, you got the T, the S-T-E-A-L. I, I, I am the S-T-I-L-L. -L. I'm the steel man. Come on, I'm the steel, steel man, steel man. Hallelujah. Steel man. Father, we give you praise. Father, I thank you right now for each individual. You have declared that this will be a year that we will finish and even though warfare is arising from all directions, we hide under the shadows of the almighty God. For you are our strength. You are our banner. You are our savior. Come on, you're the lifter of our soul. Be the lifter. Be the lifter of our souls. Come on, be the lifter of our souls. And I want to minister to those that are getting ready to clock out. Those of you that saying, I can't do this anymore. And listen, God is too faithful to walk out on him. Don't take your e exit on God exercise your faith don't take your exit I say exercise your faith it is it is in moments like this that we have to hold on to God's unchanging hand and that that that's what made Job's story so significant after losing everything even being attacked in his body and come on you had Job free and said what have you done his wife said, you, hallelujah, you might as well curse God and die. He said, you sound foolish. You sound foolish. I can't curse this God. I can't. devil you sound foolish come on come on come on you tell that devil you sound foolish there's no way there's no way I can curse there's no way I can curse my God I, moments moments life will bring you to a job a job position and said you you sound foolish I need you every time you hear that devil every time you hear Satan every time you hear that enemy trying to derail your ability to trust him through trial you tell him you sound foolish come on he he rips his mantle he shaves his head and he says for God I live and for God I'm going to die that's it would you only trust him <clears throat> only trust him only trust him just now just now only trust him only trust him just now could y'all just help me sing that come on only trust him I want to minister to some people that you were shaken. Only trust him. Hallelujah. Only trust him. Just now. Just now. Only trust him. Only trust him. Just now. Now, no, my, my congregation know that I am very transparent. And um, co-pastor said to me, she said, Cheryl, God is telling us, finish, 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 finish. 
our, 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 our daycare that we had, we invested over $200,000. And because of um, approvals and all of that, we lost it. We had to give it up, so we lost it. We lost the investment. And for about two weeks, I was so heavy. I was so angry. I was so angry, I wouldn't even talk to Kira. Every time she talked about it, I stared at her like, I would eat you apart right now. You know, I was like, I was, and I had to kind of gather myself. And I said, okay, God, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. Okay, we, we, we did everything to kind of, okay, this is, this is not good. Didn't I've been honest with you guys, I didn't want to lose it. I didn't want to lose it. It was not a desire of mine. And I felt like, at one point, even as a leader, leader I felt like I failed the vision because of decisions. Maybe I should have done this, maybe I should have done that. I said it cost us $200,000. Man, that thing hurt my heart, y'all. I fought with that's okay. I, I finally got over that. Maybe some weeks, some months, I got over that. But I was angry. I was angry. Carol couldn't even talk to me. And uh, we went through Carol said, you won't even talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. So you guys see the good parts of us when we come to church and we're laughing and we're together, but I was so upset. I was so mad. So Captain Carol would try to talk to me. I would look at her like, and she would try to go to these plans as if I want to hear them. I do not want to hear any of that. She's like, why won't you talk to me? She told me that. We pulled up. We, we, hallelujah. I felt that Dr. Andrew. Oh, ba, 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 so. I thank you, Holy Spirit, and I trust you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, in your timing, oh God. And so I, we put up right here at the campus, the Compompano campus, and and um, she said to me, she said, Pastor, why won't you talk to me? She said it so loud. I was like, I don't want to talk to anyone about that. I, and, and no one knew I was covering, but it was a great loss. And then so we shook that. We shook that. We made this transition, God enhanced or enlarged the sanctuary, all of that. We got over it. Da, 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 da. We're still closing doors with the daycare right now and negotiating, mm -hmm. really releasing ourselves from the contract. So God is working that out. And I want you guys to pray that God works that out in our favor. And then um, my brother, it was another loss. And so these are not like small losses, you guys. These are like <laughs> you ain't losing no fingernails. <laughs> Listen, thanks. I'm laughing, but y'all feel me. Ain't no, ain't no fingernail. Because sometimes we can get on, get on here and tell you guys about all the good things. Oh, we got this. And I got a new car, and I, oh, I got a new house, and oh, I got a new job. And well, we go to run it, but guess what? Ain't nothing new over here. <laughs> this was, this has been a, this has been great loss. But, but watch this. Major blows. But I hear that only trust him. Hallelujah. Only trust him. Only trust him. Just now. Just now. Only trust him. Only trust him. Just now. He will save you. That's my favorite part. He, hallelujah, will save you. He will save you. Just now. Just now, he will save you. He will save you just now. So I, I want to minister to someone that you just have lost some stuff. Whether you've gone through physical loss, mental loss, you've had a, a, a heart blow, you things just didn't work out the way it was planned and and, 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 and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying these are God sent, but they are God allowed because the enemy needed position. I'm a permission to do certain things. And if God allowed it, a tide comes from, from, the, from the east and the west, north, south, in all directions. But he only is doing this to cease. To, but he's a good, good father. That's who you are. All right, I'm leaving kingdom. That was Lisa. Who you are. Who you are and I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's 
who I am. You're perfect in all of your ways. Come on, some things you didn't understand, kingdom. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. 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 Perfect. I'm gonna let it go, Kingdom. Y'all already know I love worship. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. So we send strength right now to every individual. I don't care what you're faced with. Trust him. Give him. Come on, when you're come on, Shamika Bell. Let's put that on. That's what the preacher told us. When your yes hurts, that was the word of the Lord. That was the word, y'all. That was the word. That was the word for Sunday. I gotta get out of here. When your when your when your yes hurts, I love each of you. He would cause us to triumph and give us peace over our understanding. That's right. When we don't understand, come on. The season called burden. Come on, Karen. Y'all are ministering on here. You may be ministering to somebody's God. If God gave you a word right now, if you got a word right now, I want you to put it in the comments. You don't know who's reading this word. I swear he gonna bless you. Come on here. I want y'all to release a word. Come on. Come on. Come on. When it hurts, come on, this is the time to give him glory. Come on, I swear to God, God's going to bless you. I swear to God, God's going to see you through. I swear to God, doors getting ready to open. I swear to God, I tell you, kingdom, y'all are, y'all are, you better hold on to that word. I swear to God, don't give up on them. Keep the faith. Come on here. He's going to bless you, I swear to God. Come on, Keenan, you're blessing the city. You are blessing the fields. You are blessed when you come and when you go home. All right, Keenan, y'all got to stop. Y'all got to stop. Y'all know, y'all know this is Bible study. You know, we got to get out of here, okay? Kingdom, don't y'all, don't y'all, don't dig and soak. Y'all bet not praise him. The, the enemy don't want you to praise him, but I want you to do the opposite of him. I want all y'all to put a praise in your hand and in your mouth and go up for the next 30 seconds like you love him and God got your back. I swear to God, God's going to... Kingdom, we got to get out of here. But I swear to God, God's going to bless you. Look to the hills. I swear to God. God got you today, tomorrow. Come on, Pastor, easy forevermore. Yeah, so we gotta get out of this building. Hold my soul. Come on, Lisa. Lisa, Lisa, you better preach tonight. You better sleep in this storm. Where is your boat? You better prophesy. All right, let me get y'all out of here. Lord help us. Carol said we can't come back to this building. We're not gonna get out on time. I'm coming back to the building with full musicians. I'm telling y'all right now. I'm coming back. 
We're coming back stronger, y'all. All right, Kingdom, I love y'all. Y'all y'all know this weekend is a big weekend. We, the information is on Facebook, um, membership, church, fellowship, partners, saints, and friends. We are doing a life celebration for my brother as we leave my brother to rest. Thank you guys so much. I um, appreciate his life, his legacy, and all of that. Carol said we got to teach on the floor with no music. No. Uh -uh. All, that, all that we've been through. The devil tried to kill, steal, and through all that we survived. Tell them, kingdom, tell, kingdom, don't, don't play with us. We, we don't care if it's Bible study, prayer service. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, I come that ye may have life. All right, Chris, hold on. Go real on. You do it again, real on. Y'all, Chris preaching. Lord, you know God. God is, God is dealing with kingdom. Chris, Chris preaching. When you give him a yes, you can go get rest. <laughs> All right, Chris, we got to put it on the screen, y'all. Chris, Chris done came out of, I don't know where Chris came from. Y'all know where Chris came out of a hole. Chris, <laughs> you don't stop me from praise breaking. When, when God is using Chris on the Bible study, do it, on, do it for Chris, God. All right, let me let y'all go. Carol said, uh, if we bring musicians, we're not going to get out of church at 11.15 on Tuesdays. I, I promise y'all we're going to be good. But, hey, I love y'all. Thank y'all. Um, thank y'all richly for your prayers. For real, for real. I love y'all so much. I'm going to let you guys go. All right? Kingdom, let's do a Bible study um, offering. Whatever you want to give unto the Lord, whatever that is. You want to give $5, $10, whatever you want to give. Let's give an offering unto God into his work. Okay? We're sowing into his work. Right, we're sown into the work that God would cause us to do in the earth. You guys see the work that we're doing. We have so much, so much other, more work to be done. We've started the sanctuary, which it is beautiful. We're still putting our final touches to it. And so, Kingdom, thank you so much for all that you're giving. And again, when you're giving, you're giving to this work for you. You guys that are out there, you say, Pastor, we love the ministry. We want to see the ministry grow. Yeah, that's Chris. That's our baby. We want to see the ministry grow. We want to see these things being accomplished. And when you pitch vision, you never know who God is dealing with. I told y'all to get the foundational parts of the cafe done. It's going to cost us about $6,000. How about somebody contact me from this church, y'all? And they, are, they have already sold $1,000 towards our cafe. Right, uh, uh, Dr. Val asked me, "But how much money would it take to finish the work?" We're putting it out there as we think about all the changes that needs to be made. I think fifty thousand dollars in tops will put this building in the shape that we want it. All right, when somebody asks you a question, now y'all hear me, Kingdom. Somebody asks you, "How much will it take?" You got to be able to have the vision and the number ready. Because you never know who's going to sow. Um, tonight, I just want everybody to sow into the work. Let's give an offering to the work. If, if this ministry blesses you, if you say, Pastor, we want to make sure things are done, things are being accomplished, we want to sow into the work. Um, our giving options are on the screen. Can we put those giving options on the screen? You'll be so kind. You can give tonight. You can give five. You can give 10. You can give 20. You can give 50. Whatever your heart say, you know what? I'm sowing into this work. I want to see these doors continue to continually to be open. I want to see the finished work of what God is doing at Kingdom Builders Worship Center. And again, we don't take you guys for granted. I love you guys as well. I, we don't take you guys for granted. Every giver, every sower, we appreciate you, this team, this ministry, the vision. I believe the children appreciate you guys. They have a home, somewhere to go to, you guys. Um, so thank you guys so much. Did we? Okay, they, they're on the screen. I thought it was going to be in the comment, but it's actually, Sam actually put them on the screen, so I'm a little, I'm a little slow tonight. So they're actually on the screen, you guys. So thank you guys. Oh, y'all picking at me. <laughs> Give tonight, Pastor preached. <laughs> is that Pastor preached Bible study tonight. Uh, I'm coming to Bible study with a blue robe one, one, one Tuesday. <laughs> I'm messing with the musicians <laughs> and Tanya. Uh, so, but, but you guys, um, thank you so much for your giving. Kingdom. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you so Korean Pastor. Thank you guys so much. So 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 kingdom. Let's keep let's keep this vision going. He said after Jacob, after I'm sorry, Isaac, God told him to take a breather. After God told him to remain. 
he said he sowed where he was. And I know the Bible says, as long as there's seed time and harvest, there will be, as long as there, the earth remains, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. When you're sowing, you got to know where well, I'm sowing into this work. God is sowing back into my work. I pray all your givers, heart givers, those who didn't have to give, but wanted to give heart givers today. I speak to heart givers that as you help this work um, remain in the earth, that God is going to help you fulfill what he called you to do. Now, I did see something in the spirit and I released it to Carol. I saw the Lord. I wrote it down. I saw the Lord calls uh, businesses to emerge out of South Florida. God said, I'm going to um, deal. I, I'm dealing with the economics of this particular region. I saw not only just businesses, but specifically, specifically some black African-American businesses um, emerging out of South Florida. Many businesses will emerge, said Holy Spirit, and I'm just subject to our culture, but I literally saw businesses emerging. Holy Spirit said, I'm getting ready to give South Florida major favor in economics. Hallelujah. And I'm saying this because there's a release. I was going to, was going to release it Sunday, but God said, I'm going to bring major favor to businesses in South Florida. This region, we're going to see major businesses begin to emerge out of South Florida. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give South Florida favor. It will be almost, it will be almost, hear me, it will be almost because we are a, um, uh, a multicultural state, especially South Florida. We have so many cultures here. It's not just what's in Atlanta, but what we see in Atlanta, businesses emerging to the next level million dollar businesses, million dollar ideas. I saw million dollar marketing. God said, I'm getting ready to call South Florida to experience a uh, uh, emerging of businesses that's going to take their income to the next level. Hallelujah. An economic angel is being assigned to this region to ensure, watch this, what you plan is getting ready to grow. And God said, you're going to see it happen supernaturally over this region. I'm giving business owners favor. We believe that it's so as Jesus has declared it in Jesus name. Amen. Listen, if you are in need of a church home, as well as the church is open. We are so honored to have our online pastor, Pastor Kiosha Spence and the staff on here. We actually have an online church. We have about, what, 28, 30 members that um, that are online. We are honored to pastor those members. If you are on tonight, we love you. If you say, Pastor, I have not connected. I want to connect to this church. If you're in this region and you need a church home, a community to grow in, a, fa a spiritual family, a spiritual body to be a part of, the doors of the church is open. There were two people come to me Sunday and say, Pastor, I wanted to join the church today. And I did not that's good. That's a good move, Jasmine Robinson, to put your business in the comments. Blessed in Jesus' name. That's it. 32 members, 32 online members. Come on here. That is indeed a blessing, 32 online members. So if you're online, say, I love this ministry. I want to connect. I don't live in the area, but I want to be connected. Listen, our e-church doors are open. Our physical church doors are open. If you're in this region, we have a location in Ocala, a location in Ocala, Florida, a location in Lake Worth, Florida, and a location in Pompano. Either locations, if you're in those areas, please connect with us. If you're open to say, I want to get to know Kingdom Builders in this vision. I want to grow. I want to grow with this body. The doors of the church is open. You can put a comment in the um, on the comment saying, I want to connect with this church. And one of our staff will get with you and ensure that you connect. Kingdom, you're in my prayers. Keep me in your prayers. We love you with the love of Christ. And you guys, go in peace. God bless you. <laughs>